I'm Joseph Newman, and <clears throat> what you're fixing to see is something that has been taught to be totally impossible by all technical people around the world. Because what you're going to see is that we're going to run Big Eureka, we're going to hook it to these batteries, we're going to run Big Eureka, Big Eureka is going to run this generator that is behind us, uh, and it weighs 500 pounds, and it's going to re be charge recharging these batteries while we do this. Now there is a gentleman who came in here who's a friend of Jed's who, named Rick Boggs who's put in air conditioners and et cetera all his life on big motors and, and et cetera. Well he saw this little white motor right here sitting on this thing and immediately without me saying a word he came over and picked it up and he said this motor right here is highly efficient. It is highly efficient. He said I've used them. They're highly efficient. Now you get them from Granger. Now we're going to run, it made me realize well this is a good way to run a test. And let me ask everybody out there, <clears throat> you see how small this motor is? <clears throat> We're going to take one of these batteries out of this line and hook it to this little tiny motor right here and let it run. Now we have all of these batteries, the rest of these, we have 10 batteries. We're going to remove one of them and leave nine that we're going to run Big Eureka with. But these batteries are in series. And when you put batteries in series, the current is equivalent to what's in one battery. Big Eureka is going to make this motor look totally ridiculous, totally opposite of what that gentleman said when he picked it up and how efficient this motor was. Because it has no load on it. We have that generator that has a load on it that we're going to be recharging these batteries while we run Big Eureka. All right, we're going to hook up. This little one now. Now we've been running that one. <clears throat> that has no load on it. If it was pumping out water, it'd be drawing 10 amps. But it's already dying. Yeah, as it slows down, you'll hear that. We're going to have to baby this thing, I can tell. It's still running, because I can hear it. Uh, this battery will probably get hot by the time the hour is over. These batteries will be cool. Now, you can watch the speed of that and see that it don't basically doesn't change. It just keeps right on trucking. And this motor is smoking. It's not just hot, there's smoke coming out of it. All right, so we're going to stop it. That has been running now for 51 minutes. Flying, it's been running I'm for 51 minutes. We're going to let this motor, our motor, keep running. All right, now I'll check this battery voltage real quick. So then it's just this motor that was smoke. causing the smoke. That's correct. Okay. Bad motor. All right, somebody call out this when I hit this battery. You see that on your camera, I can see it, yes. Okay. What's our voltage on that battery? 11.4. And it started at 11.8, right? Yep. I took a little old edger, and we're going to put it, that edger where it runs this generator when it was just covered with black tape. I've added 20% more material to that generator since I ran that generator with an edger, and it ran Big Eureka at a high rate of speed. Imagine what we'll do when I put a clutch on this so that we can speed this up. As this runs, I'll take the batteries out, but I'll keep stepping up the voltage. As this thing gets to running, and it'll slowly pick up speed, and it'll slowly accelerate this mass. Because this mass is 1,650 pounds. What you can't do is make it dig out at a high rate of speed because you got to pay for that tarp when you do. It's like stepping on a gas radar on your car. This is going to change your world if you're smart enough to know the power brokers do not want you to wake up.
I'm fixing to disconnect these batteries after an hour of running this machine. Now we're running that generator. Now we're going to see this motor discharge the battery. Four tenths of a volt. During that hour's time, the motor was so hot you couldn't hardly touch it. All right, now I've disconnected that now. And I'll get both things disconnected. Now watch that keep running for a second. It's showing you it keeps producing power. And there's a voltage is on that capacitor over there. And I want to check these batteries. Uh, first, it's 11.7. You got 11, yeah. 7, 7. yeah, 11.77. You were at 11.76 when we started. All right, the second one is... 12 volts. We had nothing at 12 volts earlier. Huh. Eleven point seven four five. You were at 11.7 even on the last one. All of them are showing a higher voltage than when we started. The thing that y'all have seen today is something that history says is totally impossible. That you can run a machine under load, running a generator, and that generator is going to recharge these batteries at the same time it runs this machine. That's taught to be totally impossible. We're summing up what we did on that test. We had perpetual motion, so you understand it. Now we took the first battery, and we ran that little white motor, and it fell really five tenths, you know, in that length of time. Now I'm gonna draw an arrow over here. I put it in red because it means we're losing money. That's why I put it in red. Now I'm gonna show what it was when we finished. It was 11.4. Now when we started though, it was way over here at 11.81. That's where we started, 11.81. Uh, we didn't even get to an hour. We got to 159 and it started smoking and we disconnected it. All right, now we take the other batteries that we ran big Eureka. It weighed 7,500 pounds. The Granger catalog shows you that that motor ought to be drawing some portion of 600, better than 600 amps based on their information and they claim to be the best in the world. All right, now look what happened. We started off and I give it the highest number, 11.7. And we go to 11.770 an hour later. On this battery, it goes to 12, 12 volts. This battery here is 11.7. This is 11.74 an hour later. This is 11.7. This is 11.73 an hour later. Clearly showing everyone in that length of an hour, well, this little battery got so, the motor got so hot you couldn't hardly touch it and it started smoking. This big motor doesn't even get warm at all. Now what you see is something that defies everything that's put out by the so-called learned people of the world. This is perpetual motion because you cannot do it. Take another seven and a half thousand pound motor and let me see you run it. Off of that and the battery voltage will not fall. It'll rise. Now what you're seeing here, if you look at this, you got a, a chart made by Dr. Swimmer this shows you something that you won't see on any graph on electrical motors of conventional motor. But look at this. It rises. All these turns has never been seen before on the conventional electrical motor. It's always linear in a straight line. This is perpetual motion, and we will make it change this world. Thank you.